So now we'll go into some troubleshooting for uh, M. Damon. This part is useful to understand, for example, the log files. So we have a series of logs. You've got an SMTP in, SMTP out log, routing, anti-spam, and so forth. The SMTP in log is used for all inbound SMTP connections. Now, that can be for an inbound connection from an external mail server that's sending inbound mail to your users, or it can be an inbound connection from one of your local users sending an outbound message. In other words, I have an Outlook client. If I want to send an outbound message from Outlook, my Outlook first has to connect to mDaemon using an inbound SMTP session. Once that inbound SMTP session is connected, then mDaemon will attempt to deliver that message to an external recipient by creating an outbound SMTP session. So that outbound session, you can monitor using the SMTP outlog. The mDaemon routing log will show you a the path a message takes as it passes through the various mail queues. There's also an mDaemon anti-spam log for spam filtering activities, obviously. System log showing system-wide activities such as system starting and stopping, various different server components running or not running or starting and stopping, and various other PGP settings and things like that or activities. There's a screening log for dynamic screening, SMTP screening, and other screening activities. And then the mDaemon all log file, if you're not sure which log to check, you can always start with the mDaemon all log, which will be a compilation of all that data in a, uh, in a single log file. So it's very useful. mDaemon does have colorized session logs in the remote administration interface as well. So it can help you pinpoint certain commands and activities. So when somebody says, what happens when a user sends an outbound email from Outlook, that inbound SMTP connection from the user's Outlook is connected to mDaemon and is shown in the SMTP end log. The message will be placed into a temporary queue for initial processing before it goes into the remote queue where it can be sent outbound to the external recipient and that outbound connection activity is written to the SMTP outlog. Here's what happens when you're sending an outbound message from an Outlook client. First, it goes to the SMTP in log. You can see the connecting IP address of the sender's mail client. You can see the various, the EHA low command, and then the various commands that are supported, such as ETRN, auth login, start TLS, size, and so forth. These are the supported SMTP extensions, basically. Then we have our mail from command, and then sender OK, and then the receipt to command. So I'm sending from salesmith at example.edu to user, user1 at example.net recipient OK, and then the data command is transmitted. Notice the direction of these arrows, by the way. So right-facing right, right facing arrow is an outbound command. Left-facing is an inbound command. And then the server says, OK, enter mail and end with uh, the carriage return characters. Passing message through antivirus. There's your antivirus scanning. Message is clean, no virus is found, uh, found by Icarus or by Clam AV. Message creation successful. So this message is now in the inbound queue right here. And then from here, it says, okay, message saved. mDaemon takes over. So mDaemon has ownership of this message now and a quick command is issued and this session is terminated. Then an outbound connection is made to the recipient's mail server. So now this message is in the remote queue and it looks a little different here. It's in sitting in the remote queue waiting to be delivered. You've got your from, your to, and any DNS records that are resolved for the receiving domain to determine where to send it are, are specified here. Resolving your MX record, this determines where to send the mail for that particular domain. In this case, it says match to MX cache. Uh, there's a file in mDaemon called MX cache where you can cache MX records or mDaemon can just do an MX record lookup for every outbound connection, which is the default. We are attempting our SMTP connection to that receiving server. We're waiting for the connection and the connection is established. As you can see here, uh, the two connecting IP addresses. And then the EHLO command is given. And with the EHLO or extended, extended hello, basically, you have a various, various different commands that are supported. The receiving server specifies which commands are supported, VRFY, ETRN, and so forth. TLS negotiation begins right here, which says ready to start TLS. And then I'm just going to jump down a little bit. You've got your mail from and your recipient to, like we saw previously. And then right here, the receiving server says, 
enter mail and with these uh, your carriage returns right here. So it's ready to receive the message. So your mail server, now M. Damon is sending this mail from the remote queue to the receiving server from the remote queue. Transfer complete. Now, this is important where it says 250, okay, message saved. The receiving server at this point has taken ownership of the message and then the session is terminated. And I'll have another log file coming up that talks about this again, because if you don't see this, there are some other things to take into consideration. This looks a, like a lot of information, so I'm not going to go over all of this. This can be found in the MDMN product manual or help file. These are all the steps that it, a message goes through when it's delivered. So your SMTP server starts, user database is checked, and then some of your security settings are checked against the incoming message like tar pitting, IP screening, and so forth, SSL handshake. If you become familiar with these steps, it makes it a little easier when you're going through your log files as you can actually see these steps going in order when a message is being delivered. And there are, I think I have three pages of these here, IP shielding, um, SPF, authentication, relay check, and so forth. And then as you get a little bit further along, it goes through your DKIM SPF and also DMARC as well, those anti-spoofing tools we talked about. And then from here, it goes into the local the remote queue. And at this point, the SMTP server is done in the mail transfer agent or MTA takes over from there. And then various other features, antivirus scanning, antivirus outbreak protection, spam filtering, content filtering processes are performed, and then final delivery if it's a local or if it's remote, it's delivered to the receiving server. When you're troubleshooting mail delivery issues, there's a tool that you may find quite useful called QN Statistics Manager. This is also one of those features that you can only access through the MDM and console or configuration session. Under the Qs menu, you have a, under QN Statistics Manager, I'll show you, I believe it's on the next screen here, you have a tab called log page. You also have a user page tab where you can view your user's mailboxes. But under the log page tab, you can click on this button down here to open a log file. Let's say, for example, I want to open up my MDAM and all log file. And what this will do is it'll scan that log file and it will itemize all of the mail sessions that were detected in that particular log file. It found five inbound and 54 outbound sessions. And then you can click on a session and it'll show you just that specific session. So it's quite useful for troubleshooting purposes. You can also track a message through the various mail keys by copying the message ID header. So if you have, for example, the MDM and all log file, and you want to follow it through the delivery process, you can find the message ID header, which I have highlighted in red. And let's say you've got this, this file open in Notepad. You can do a find command, and then you can hit F3 on your keyboard, and it will take you to the next instance of that message ID header. And if you keep hitting F3 or next, it will show you the path that the message took. So right now, for example, we can see my mouse here. It's in the temp directory temp folder. It's going through the CLAM AV scan process. It is now in the inbound queue as shown here. And then this inbound in bold letters indicates that it is still in the inbound queue. And it, now it's in the local queue. It's going through spam filter processing while it's sitting in the local queue. And from here, it's going through antivirus processing. It's going through content filter processing. And from here, it's placed into my local mailbox. So my local mailbox being, remember, the MDM and users directory inside the mailbox for that particular user. So a couple of scenarios you might run into, let's say, for example, you've got mail that's sent to an unknown local user or an invalid address. As you can see here, you might see something like 550, this particular user uh, recipient unknown. And the setting that governs that is under your security, security settings under relay control, where it says SMTP recipient or RCPT address must exist if it uses a local domain. Because I had that box checked, this account, because it was not a, a valid local recipient, was rejected. And then on the flip side to that, mail sent from an unknown local user or what we call spoofing. In this case, we have 550 sender unknown. And for that, what caused this message was, again, under security settings, relay control, SMTP mail address must exist if it uses a local domain. So that was my local sender. And since it wasn't a valid local sender, that local SMTP mail address did not exist, then it was rejected. 
let's say, for example, you have mail sent from an IP address that does not have a valid PTR record. You can see here where it says in red, performing PTR lookup and connection must have valid PTR record. And then it closes a connection. That's based on my security settings under reverse lookups. Um, send 501 and close a connection if no PTR record match. There are a, a number of other examples of these, but when you become familiar with those log files and what they say in relation to what you can see here, like the settings, this will start to make more sense to you as you see more examples. Here's an example of a message that was going through the spam filter and it was being processed by a DNS block list lookup. In this case, it was being processed by zen.spamhouse.org. This message uh, sender, the sending IP address, was block listed by Spamhouse. MDMN sent out a 550 mail from this address, refused, see spamhouse.org. That's based on your spam filter configuration under DNS block, block list here under hosts. We have bl.spamhouse.org listed here. And then also a message was blocked by the spam filter. In this case, message where it says spam filter processing, this message is certainly, currently in the local queue. This message has accumulated 9.5 points. Four points are required. In other words, this is spam if it scores four or above. And to determine how it, uh, how it accumulated those 9.5 points, you can view this information down here. For example, 1.8 points were added because it contained a URL that uh, on a URIBL block list, 1.7 points were added. And these were all tallied up to accumulate 9.5. So that's based on your spam filter configuration settings here, where it says a message is spam if its score is greater than or equal to. In this case, we have 4.0 as our scoring threshold. So just a final note, when you're looking at your logs, when you're troubleshooting mail delivery issues, make sure, for example, if it's an, an outbound message, Make sure that you see this right here, 250, okay, message saved. And then the, the quit, see you in cyberspace. If you don't see message saved, then let's say you have a local user who sent mail to a, an external domain and they the external user didn't receive it. They would typically be able to check their logs to see if their server rejected it, for example. However, if you don't see 250, okay, message saved, it just kind of stops doesn't give you any definitive closure as to, okay, this mail was definitely delivered, then that usually is caused by something in between your mail server or something on your network. So it could be third-party antivirus that's scanning your mdaemon directory. So if you have a third-party antivirus application on the mail server, we recommend that you configure it to not scan the mdaemon directory. It could be something like a router firewall issue on your local network. So watch for 250 OK message saved. If you don't see that, check your local network.